Hi everyone, it's Ramon Khan from RMK Six Sigma bringing you another episode where I go through a worked example from my book Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17. Okay, so even if you don't own the book, you can still download the data set we're going to be going through uh, from my website rmk6sigma.com. If you like what you see, please hit the thumbs up or subscribe. Hi Minitabbers, today we're going to be looking at multiple regression using the assistant for Minitab 17. So multiple regression is usually the domain of black belts and it's quite a complex procedure when you're using the classical menus. But uh, Minitab, set, Minitab have managed to bring this process into the assistant in Minitab 17 and have made the process much more accessible for people with less experience than black belts as well. So I put it into my book. Uh, mini Six Sigma Statistics using Minitab 17 and I've put this process in and there's a similar process for sequential design of experiments as well which we'll cover in the next episode. Okay so we're going to be going through exercise 12.7.2 multiple regression and you can download the data from rmk6sigma.com to work along. So the exercise scenario that we have is data has been collected on a process where four predictors are thought to affect a single continuous response variable. The data has not been collected in time order. Conduct the appropriate regression analysis and answer the questions below. Okay, and the questions are, are any of the predictors correlated? Are all of the predictors significant? How much of the variation in the response can be explained by changes in the predictors? What terms are present in the model? Are there any unusual data points in the study and are they an issue? What are the top solutions to obtain a value of 200 in the response? So six questions there to answer. Okay, let's have a look at our data in Minitab. So there we've got our C1 to C4 are our predictors and I've cleverly called those columns PRED 1 to 4 to stand for predictor 1 to 4 and our response is in C5. So ideally we want a, a regression equation where we use predictors 1 to 4 if they are all significant to form an equation where these terms then equal the response value. So we can make a model and use that model for prediction in the future once we validated it. Okay, the first thing that we said we wanted to see were, were any of our, are any of our predictors correlated? And the reason we want to do that is if they are correlated, it can produce instability in the model, which is called multicollinearity. So we need to check for that first. And we're only doing a partial check for that, but it's worth doing right at the start. So I'm going to click stats, basic stats, correlation to bring in our four predictors and click OK. It's easy as that. And we automatically go to the session window to check the results and what we want to see is a what we what we don't want to see is a p value below our significance level of 0 0.05 so if we look here the p level here is 0 0.169 0 0.692 0 0.066 so they're close to being correlated predictor 2 and predictor 3 and we have a very close one here predictor 4 and predictor 3 but they aren't correlated because it's still greater than 0 0.05 Okay, let's go back to our data now before we start the uh, procedure within the assistant. To run the multiple regression routine in the assistant, we click on assistant, regression, brings up the regression menu. So if you've only got one predictor variable, use simple regression, but we've got two to five variables, we've got four, haven't we? So we can either do multiple regression or optimize response. And as part of the question was to give a uh, response optimization, we're going to click on optimize response, which gives us the same report as multiple regression, but just gives us one extra page. Uh, we're going to use that option. Okay, so our response variable is called response. And what is your goal for the response? Well, we want to achieve a target because that's what we've been asked to do in the question and our target was 200. Okay, so now we can input our x variables, our predictors, and we've got four predictors that we're using as x variables. 
We also have the option of putting in a categorical x variable and although we don't have one for this example I believe there is one in the book if you want to have a look at that and to see how that's done. Then the default tick box for fit two-way interactions and quadratic terms is already ticked and so if you you know it's worth looking at those uh, in every instance if you if you are doing this kind of exercise and in our case the data wasn't recorded in time order so that box isn't ticked okay to run the procedure we click OK okay so we get a, a six page report there so let's have a look at each page in turn starting with the summary report on the top left of the summary report we're asked is there a relationship between the x and the y variables and it's a definite yes with a p-value of less than 0 0.001 but one thing to note here um, the mini tab is using a 90 percent confidence interval so the significance level is uh, 0.1 so it's slightly different to what we're used to we're usually normally we're used to a 95% confidence interval but um, the assistant is using something different here and there's no options to change that okay below that we're told that the percentage of variation explained by the model the R squared is 87.46% and that's pretty good as you can see it's almost given a high designation okay below that we're shown four scatter plots of each predictor against the response and we can look for trends there this kind of like a, a straight increasing gradient there not much of a trend for predictor 2 and uh, predictor 3 seems quite scattered predictor 4 is grayed out as it's not deemed significant for this model so it's been excluded from the model and grayed out on the top right we have our comments and we can see the terms that have been included in the model so x1 is predictor 1 the next two is predictor 2 so X predictors 1 to 3 are included and then predictor 2 the quadratic term is included and there's an interaction term for x1 and x2 included as well in the model okay let's go on to the next page so just looking at the effects report so here we're shown our predictor 1 star predictor 2 interaction not much to say of that at this point and then below that we're given main effects plots for predictors 1 to 3 so as you can see this is a positive gradient for predictor 1 so as the value of predictor 1 increases so does the response same for 2 and 3 but I would say that predictor 1 is having the most effect on the response as it increases level the most you can see the slight curvature there for predictor 2 maybe that's where the quadratic comes in and predictor 3 although there's a positive response it's not as great as 1 and 2 okay let's move on to the next slide so we have our diagnostic report so we're given two points with large residuals one's there and the other one's down here okay they're not too far maybe this one's quite far from the main body of data but these two aren't that far and we would expect I think is it 5% of data to be unusual anyway so I'm not too worried about those um, sorry to be have large residuals so we're not too worried about those and we have one two three points that are deemed to be unusual x values now I've previously checked the predictor values at these points for instance row 15 etc for the others and I can't see why they've actually been deemed as unusual data points there's no issues there for me so I'm gonna let that go and move on to the next slide so next we have the model building report and right at the top we're given our uh, predictors and then we're given our model equation now to me really that's not really um, doing it giving enough value to the model equation in that small barely noticeable text so I'm just going to make that a bit bigger for us let's go on the 11 okay so our response value which was our uh, column 5 wasn't it equals minus 93.6 plus 0 0.03 times x1 blah 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 we have an equation there where we can predict our response values based on our uh, predictors okay below that we have the model 
building sequence which shows us how these terms were added into the model and how uh, X1 was added first because it had the most uh, impacts on the response then X2, then X3, then the interaction term, then the quadratic term. It's quite interesting. Okay, um, I, I don't find the two other bar charts on the other side of particular values, so let's move on to the next slide. Okay, so this one is the prediction and optimization report because we asked uh, what predictor settings we should use to achieve a response of 200. We've been given an answer there, but one of the possible answers of you should have a value of 51.787 for predictor 1, 54.19 for 2, and then there's 1 for 3 as well. And that will give us a predicted average y value of 200. But when you're running the experiment and you're setting up the predictors, you may get individual values anywhere between 158.12 to 241.88 and that's the 95% prediction interval but on average the values will um, average out to 200. Again we're given the main effects uh, plots for our three significant predictors and then below that we're given alternate solutions for the predicted Y. Okay finally moving on I think the last one now is the report card. Okay, it's telling us our sample size is large enough to obtain a precise estimate of the strength of the relationship. I think we needed to have 45 data points if we were using six predictors, so we're quite safe. We're then given un uh, warnings about unusual data points. And then again, because we had more than 15 data points, the normality of our residuals is not an issue in this study. And then we're given some advice on prediction and optimization on uh, what to do to achieve our target level of 200. Okay, now this is a really useful tool, so if you need any more help, please refer to the book. If you've got any questions or more information, please drop us a line on rmk6sigma.com. Uh, great, see you next time. Thank you, bye.